American drone being shot down. Mm-hmm. Why won't Iran stop bragging about it? What what's what's the big deal for them by shooting down an unmanned drone? Well, I I don't I truly don't understand the psychology. It almost seems almost as if they're trying to get Trump to do something against them so they can claim to be the victim. Mm-hmm. And that's the part about this. I'm sorry to say with all of my education on this subject, I'm really perplexed. Um, we were literally, according to the White House minutes that were released and uh, the tweets, the United States had literally started the process of retaliation when the American drone, which by the way was in international waters at the time it was shot down, and like I said, it, it was unarmed, um, but it was very expensive. It's a very, very big flying platform. When it was blown up, the United States, under presidential direction, was already in the process of Germain of retaliating against Iran. And for some reason, a reason that has not been announced or explained, the President of the United States called off the response minutes, just minutes, before it was due to happen, meaning the planes that were armed stood down, the ships that have long-range cruise missiles on them stood down. Whether or not there were going to be troops moving in, they were called back. We still to this minute, right now on this show, Jermaine, do not know why the president backed down. All that's happened since then, Jermaine, is President Trump has said more sanctions, even tougher sanctions, that are already tougher than the toughest sanctions that have ever been instituted, are going to be used to strangle Iran economically. I I have a theory, if you'd like to hear it. Shoot. I want to hear it. (laughs) (laughs) I, I I don't know if it's true, but I'll tell you what I think, okay? I think, like I said, this has a, a big asterisk next to it because I really don't know this is true. I think what Trump is trying to do is because the Western world, the P5 plus one nations that signed the JCPOA, don't want it to go away because they want the trade with Iran. He has got to make Iran look so horrible, so aggressive, so outrageous in their behavior before he does anything Mm -hmm. so that the world doesn't line up against the United States. I mean, that's kind of my guess. It's as if he wants the sanctions to get tougher and tougher and tougher, which they're actually going to kick in some big ones on top of the big ones on top of the big ones in the next week to two weeks, especially with the International Bank of Settlements, which uh, handles international movements of money for Iran. They're going to strangle Iran economically until Iran either capitulates and agrees to a new deal with anytime inspections everywhere throughout the country, which is what is needed, and cancels their missile development program everywhere, and agrees to stop exporting terror immediately, unless all those things happen, with National Security Advisor John Bolton saying those are the things he wants to be included. Um, Unless those things happen, the sanctions are going to get tougher and tougher and tougher until finally the economy of Iran is going to be completely isolated. And at that point, there's either a revolution internally, which from my sources, especially in Israel, they think is a real possibility, or Iran does something really militarily stupid, like shoots a missile at an American ship with people on it, uh, and we retaliate. And then the retaliation, I think, will be crushing. One thing Trump did hint at um, a couple weeks ago, Jermaine, which may be the hint that proves I'm right. He said there was nobody on the drone. It was unmanned. Mm. Had it been manned and an American had died, it would have been totally different. And our response would have been totally different. 
And yeah. what I read into that is if an American sailor or soldier or airman is hurt or killed, the United States will react very aggressively and militaristically on top of the sanctions. And at that point, Europe will get out of the way, and the only enemy of the president's policy, in my opinion, will be the 20-plus Democrat candidates for president of the United States who can't imagine why we would not want Iran to be in a position to allow inspections of their nuclear sites. Every single candidate wants to put the Iran nuclear deal back together because Barack Obama is sort of their fearless leader slash messiah. And yeah, it was good <laughs> crazy. Barack Obama, they want it. Even though not one single candidate can explain to the American people or the Congress why a deal is a good deal that doesn't allow inspections of all the sites all the time, any time, and has not enforced anything against Iran on their ballistic missile program. It's as if they just have talking points left over from John Kerry from a few years ago, <laughs> and they're just going to keep puking those same talking points out, even though they really don't understand what they're saying. Keep in mind, one closing thought on this, the same person that negotiated the Iran nuclear deal with Kerry was the one that negotiated the nuclear deal with Kim, Kim Jong-il, the father of Kim Jong-un, and Korea breached it as soon as they signed it with Clinton. Mm. So the same person that really screwed up in Korea got hired by a later Democrat president, Obama, Wendy Schumer was her name, to negotiate with Kerry and got nothing in return. We got nothing from Korea uh, in exchange for tremendous amounts of aid. Remember when everybody was starving in Korea, we sent them tons and tons and tons mm -hmm. of food, and they promised to stop building bombs. Well, they built bombs like crazy, right? Obama gave them $150 billion, got a signature on an agreement that they breached almost immediately. <laughs> never stopped exporting terror, never stopped enhancing uranium on uninspectable uh, sites. And Europe thought it was great because Europe got all the contracts, not the United States. They're making all the money, and we gave Iran the money to spend on terrorism, like the Houthi rebels in Somalia, like Hezbollah in Lebanon, like Hamas in Gaza, like Islamic Jihad all over the Middle East. Why? Because those are terrorists that want to bring down freedom and want to institute the caliphate everywhere they can, and that is the goal, quite frankly, of the mullahs from the supreme leader on down in Iran. 